Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are recording this presentation and we are going to use the question and answer box. If we have time at the end of our presentation, we will um, get into some of those questions. So um, thank you for joining today. We're going to talk about our strategic plan and how we partner together at all levels of NSPE to achieve our vision. I am Trish Hatley, and I'm currently serving as your NSPE president. For our conversation today, I'll be joined by two of our officers and future presidents, Rick Garrett and Britt Smith. All three of us have served as state presidents and are actively engaged in our state societies. We truly value the work done at the state and local level, and we are honored to have the opportunity to serve with you. I'm very excited that we also have with us today, Adam Jones. Adam is the Executive Director for the South Carolina Society of Professional Engineers, and he is also currently serving as the State Society Executives Council President. In that role, Adam is an NSPE board member, and he also serves on our Executive Committee. He's deeply committed to the success of our organization at all levels, and I've really enjoyed working alongside Adam so far this year. I'm thrilled that he's able to join us today to share his perspective on this conversation. This is our agenda for today. We have a lot that we want to discuss, but we may not get into as many details as you would like in certain areas. So I hope that this is the start of a conversation that we can continue into a phone call later or in our membership tier calls or maybe our regional meetings or even around our board tables. So before we get into the presentation, let's do a quick poll so that everyone can see and get a sense for who is on the webinar with us today. So we have quite a few participants, so we'll give everybody a minute to get comfortable with the polls. We're going to be using the polling um, quite a bit throughout our presentation today. Okay, so hopefully you can see those results. You can see we have some state society officers, staff members, um, House of Delegates members, NSPE um, board members, and, and, and quite a few NSPE staff as well, some committee chairs and committee members. Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate your participation. So in the last decade, NSPE has undertaken several long-term initiatives designed to ensure that our organization remains relevant and stays true to our mission. Many of these initiatives were multi-year efforts involving members and leaders across the country. And while these items each had a specific purpose and focus, they are comprehensively part of a long-range plan to solidify our place in the engineering community and to ensure that we are taking steps, climbing that mountain, towards achieving our vision. As we reflect on the departure of NSPE Executive Director and CEO Mark Golden, we can clearly see that Mark not only brought us new ideas and the leadership to stay the course through the implementation, but that his influence on our organization will be felt for many years to come. The Race for Relevance conversations that many of you participated in helped us to streamline our goals and focus our efforts in impactful ways. And the introduction of our NSPE logo and the membership model were critical steps in moving us into alignment, allowing NSPE to work at all three levels, national, state, and chapter, to provide our members value and to retain our place of influence in the engineering community at large. The next obvious step was to revisit our society's strategic plan to build upon these efforts and align our goals. One of the broad issues addressed was the NSPE, NSPE NYSET relationship. If you don't know, NS, NYSET is the certification division of NSPE. These certification operations account for a little more than 50% of our society's income. So leveraging NYSET's contributions and connection is imperative to our success. Internally, streamlining marketing and communications has increased our effectiveness and externally defining NYSET certification programs and the role of the engineering team will strengthen NSPE and our profession. Another direct result of strategic planning was hiring of Eric Schoner, our chief engagement officer who started with NSPE back in February. 
Eric's focus on engagement with our state societies and enhancement of our member recruitment and retention efforts was a critical element of our strategic plan. We had no idea how critical his role would become just weeks later as things began to shut down with COVID. His focus on engagement with our state execs, our state leaders, and our members, even those in non-integrated states, has been crucial over these last many months. So before we move any further in this discussion, I wanna pause and say a huge thank you. Whether you are a longtime NSPE member or you're new to our organization, this year has been tough. I've been impressed with the, with the enthusiasm, dedication, and passion that each of you have brought to your role in our organization. Those of you who know me personally know that I've run several marathons. And what I love most about running a marathon is not um, the actual race, but it's the training and the anticipation leading up to the event. The sense of accomplishment that I feel when logging my miles and checking off those tough long runs is fulfilling, and it motivates me to continue on the journey. And if you've ever trained for a, um, an endurance event like a marathon, you know that there are many things that can derail your plans. Injuries or even bad weather, those are just a few. I, I like to think that the marathon is the metaphor for the journey that we are on together with NSPE. It's not a sprint. There's no magic pill that will fix our problems or propel us forward. It's gonna take hard work, following the plan and staying the course. So thank you for joining us on this journey. And thank you for, the, for your hard work and your dedication that you have for NSPE and for our profession. 2020 has brought challenges upon us all personally and professionally. At NSPE, our revenue was immediately impacted by the closing of testing centers across the country. And we were forced to make staff cuts, which means that our current staff is working harder than ever before. And they are doing so while working from home. Like many of you, they're concerned with the health and safety of their families. They have children that need care and attention and, and education and they're physically isolated from their peers, which creates additional stress and challenges. Individually, many of us are feeling these same stressors, but I think it's important for us to acknowledge that these challenges are real and have an impact on us as, as an organization and what we are able to accomplish together. Our state societies are dealing with these similar challenges in many cases, and many of our state societies have also been financially impacted as their conferences were postponed or moved to virtual platforms. And our chapters have had to get creative with how they can interact with members and accomplish their plans without being able to meet in person. These disruptions have had very real impacts on the day-to-day -day operations of our organization and on the implementation of our strategic plan. So as our board convened for our first meeting of this fiscal year, we took some time to step back and look at the impact of these disruptions. We began the conversation by focusing on how our members have been impacted. This is a simple question, but it profoundly changed my perspective on the situation and gave me a new lens to look through when evaluating our plan. So let's pause here and I ask each of you to take a look at the question on the screen here. The items listed here are things that our board discussed during our first session. So let's look together at, at this from the perspective of our state and chapter organizations. Give you all a minute to answer the poll. Okay, here you see. Looks like and the majority say that challenges um, connecting, connecting and engaging with members, um, but all of these, the all three of these items you have felt um, in engaging with your state and local chapters. So let's um, let's now drill down a little bit more and look at it from the individual member perspective. What are our individual members experiencing during this time?
So many of you say that our, our members are experiencing that lack of connection and engagement, also increased workloads. I know I've seen that in my office. Um, and then of course the financial challenges, reduction of training budgets and resistance by employers to pay dues. So all of these are very real issues and are impacting our members. So we know that these challenges and disruptions are impacting people differently. And some are experiencing pain and hardship more deeply than others as they deal with COVID. But all of us are experiencing it one way, or the, one way or another. So what has NSPE done in response to this situation? As I mentioned previously, at the national level, we were impacted immediately and we moved quickly to reduce operational costs to maintain our financial stability as an organization. Our team was already working on implementation of remote proctoring for one of our NYSET certifications. And so that effort was accelerated. We immediately began adding webinar offerings to allow our NSPE members to obtain the continuing education they needed for their license renewals. And conferences across our organization were moved to virtual formats. We had multiple meetings with state leaders across the country dealing with the conversion to share best practices and ideas on how to make the process as smooth as possible. Our leadership team at the national level met weekly at first and has maintained bi-weekly conference calls to discuss issues and our response to the crisis. And we've enhanced our communications with members and leaders across our organization in a variety of ways, including our discussion today. Our conversation today is an important step in the implementation of our strategic plan, which you can find on the NSPE leadership toolbox section of our society's webpage. Many of you participated in the development of the plan and others of you were briefed on the details of the plan at our meetings in Kansas City in July of 2019. But some of you are new to your leadership position, positions. You may have read the plan, but you may have questions about the strategies and the tactics and you may not understand the why behind the statements. While we probably won't answer all of your questions today, we can certainly start the conversation and then have follow-up discussions. It's very important that this plan not just sit on a shelf. The strategies identified in the plan are there for a reason. Their implementation is necessary in order for us to collectively achieve our goals. There are certainly strategies and tactics within the plan that NSPE at the national level will lead, but there are others that rely deeply on our state societies and our local chapters. And even those items that national is taking the lead on depend on the engagement of our states and our local chapters in their participation. So we are clearly linked at the hip on this. Your knowledge of the plan strategies and your buy-in to the execution is critical. We are only successful if we are all successful. As we start the conversation about the plan and our updates to the plan, let's go back to this video narrated by Mark Golden. In this six minute video, he very eloquently walks through the process used in the development of the plan and provides for a nice overview of its foundational elements. It starts from a simple premise, something that has been NSPE's unchanging reason for being since it was founded 85 years ago. It is a premise that should resonate with anyone on the street, regardless of their familiarity or lack of familiarity with NSPE, engineering, or licensure. That premise is that we all deserve to live in a world where we can be confident that the engineering decisions affecting our lives are made by qualified, and ethically accountable professionals. NSPE's unique role in bringing this vision to reality naturally flows from this in a mission statement of just nine words in language that is plain and direct. That mission is to foster licensed professional engineers in service to society. That is the foundation of NSPE's newly updated strategic plan. It had been five years since the NSPE strategic plan was last reviewed and updated. The Race for Relevance initiative that produced that plan enabled the society to make great strides forward, cementing the PE and those aspiring to become PEs at the center of our organization's focus. A lot has been accomplished in those five years. As an organization and a profession, we have much to be proud of, but much remains to be realized, 
It was time to build on what had been accomplished and bring new focus to where the society is today and where we need it to be in the future. The strategic plan revision was a more than year long project. Before it was done, we had conducted 56 one-on-one -on -one interviews and follow-up interviews with state, national, and NYSET leadership. Conducted a nationwide interactive workshop with more than 50 state leaders participating. Offered a comprehensive survey of state societies. Discussions were held on 15 regional conference calls. Three workshop conference calls were held with the State Society Executives Council. We did a historical document review, benchmarking NSPE to similar organizations, both within and outside the engineering field, and a project team of six independent but coordinated working groups strove throughout the year to craft this plan. In the process, we learned that there was an equal intensity behind the desire for both continuity and change. Continuity with the society's unchanging goal of protecting the public health, safety, and welfare, and a recognition that we needed change in order to achieve more impact through strategies backed by resources that will deliver real-world results. That will be achieved by engaging in activities governed by the organization's values, ethics and accountability, guiding and guarding public health, safety, and welfare above all other considerations, qualifications, defining and ensuring that the appropriate level of professional standards are applied across the entire engineering team, professional advancement, assisting individuals to become licensed or appropriately certified in engineering, and ensuring that today's engineers continue to acquire and master the skills and knowledge that will be necessary to meet the needs of tomorrow, and unity, teamwork, respect, inclusion, and equity across all disciplines and for all engineers. All of this is supported through a single integrated membership of seamless services provided through national, state societies, and local chapters in close partnership. This is the all-important why and how of NSBE. We can never afford to take our eyes off these statements. They need to guide and inform every decision we make as an organization, but they are insufficient unless they drive toward the accomplishment of concrete goals our measures of success for the new strategic plan, growth in mission impact at all levels of the organization, increased public recognition of the value of competent and ethical engineering, increased membership and participation across all programs that engages more people and engages them more fully, maximized synergy where value created anywhere in the NSPE ecosystem benefits everyone in the system, and financial sustainability and growth for national, state societies, and NYSET certifications. While capturing all of this on one page was a monumental task, now the real work has begun. The board is committed and at work translating these goals into action plans. The board is now accountable for delivering results consistent with the roadmap the plan sets out before us. But every one of you has a role in carrying NSPE forward, whether in an official capacity or as a rank and file member. If this new statement of our strategic plan has sparked a renewed commitment from you to stand with us and to work with us towards accomplishing NSPE's mission and goals, we are off to a great start and we cannot be stopped. To learn more. Right. As Trish mentioned, in the video, Mark Golden provides a good overview of the foundational elements of our new strategic plan. Now I want to take you a little deeper into the areas of the plan that will drive our actions across all levels of NSPE in the coming years. In addition to restating and emphasizing our vision, mission, values, and goals, 
Our new plan sets out strategies and tactics in four key areas. Focusing our efforts on driving growth, shaping public policy, educating for the future, and promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineer will move NSPE down the most direct path toward our mission and vision while simultaneously supporting our values and driving success and achieving our goals. What you see here is the driving growth strategy detail page of our strategic plan. This particular page of the strategic plan outlines the strategies and tactics adopted by our board of directors for driving growth. To drive growth now and into the future, NSP at all levels must increase awareness of the value it creates and excite a deeper and more personal level of commitment from members, NYSET certificate holders, and other key stakeholders. While these efforts can and will be supported nationally, they must be compelling and specific enough to be executed on a sustained basis at the local level. Accordingly, our strategies for driving growth include providing skill building programs on sales, marketing, and engagement, increasing investment in national marketing activities, promoting the value of the engineering team, building enthusiasm to full fuel membership growth and engagement at the local level, and collaborating with state societies on activities that drive membership growth. NSPE actively promotes the value of the professional engineer in protecting public health, safety, and welfare, and advocates for standards and qualifications that provide competent and ethical practices across the entire engineering team. Our strategies for shaping public policy include advocating for more consistent and rigorous application of professional licensure and NYSET certification, supporting changes to the current PE licensure system to improve effectiveness and be responsive to the future, providing education on the role of a qualified engineering team in protecting public health, safety, and welfare, and advocating for the involvement of PEs in emerging technologies. As the recognized and authoritative expert in engineering licensure, engineering technician and technologist certification, ethics, and professional practice, NSPE provides the knowledge and tools necessary to become licensed or appropriately certified and to maintain current and in, uh, with changes in technology, law, regulation, and society in order to empower competent and ethical engineering by the entire engineering team. Our strategies for educating for the future include providing educational resources for members to advance their careers and prepare them for leadership, educating on public health, safety, and welfare issues related to emerging technologies, creating synergy between local, state, and national educational offerings to provide increased member value, and equipping state societies for providing skill building programs on personal and organizational leadership. NSPE is committed to improving the profession by advocating for and supporting a climate of diversity and inclusion. Through ongoing and effective partnering, training, programs, and outreach, NSP will actively work to ensure that membership in our organization reflects the ever-changing demographic of our society. Our strategies for promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineer include Developing and promoting a culture of diversity and inclusion across all levels of NSPE. Joining with others to promote a culture of diversity and inclusion in the engineering profession. And identifying and creating opportunities to attract, nurture, and retain diverse members of the profession. To establish benchmarks and measure our collective progress moving forward, the Board of Directors adopted Key Performance Indicators, or KPIs, in each of the four strategic focus areas. As seen here, for the driving growth area, our key performance indicators are dues paying members, net promoter score, and NYSET certification exams administered. For shaping public policy, our KPIs are legislative touches, 
and members holding elected or appointed positions. Social media followers, attendance or usage of educational offerings, and number of educational offerings are our KPIs for educating for the future. And from promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineer, our KPIs are conversion rate of student members to full dues paying membership, diversity of our state and national leaders, and young professional dues paying members. Numerical goals were also established for each KPI in each of the first three years of the plan. These goals were intended to be challenging, but achievable, and were based upon historical data and our best projections of results in light of, of our available resources. Although we don't have time to review these goals in detail today, I'd like to point out that two of our initial goals were listed as to be determined. In these cases, baseline data was not available, but is now being collected and enabling tracking for the future. As Trish mentioned earlier, the challenges and disruptions of these last nine months have had very real impacts on the day-to-day -day operations of our organization and on the implementation of our strategic plan. As we entered the fiscal year, it was clear that a review and recalibration of the plan was needed in order to account for the unexpected challenges of 2020. We began by reviewing the results of the first year of plan implementation. Here's what we found. On the positive side, we saw increased legislative touches, added social media followers, increased of edu increasing of educational offerings, increased usage of educational programming, improved diversity and leadership positions. But we fell short in other areas. We saw a net loss in members. We had a drop in NYSET testing revenue and we saw a setback in our net promoter score. Armed with this information, the NSPE Board of Directors met in early October to review and update the strategic plan. As Rick stated, we did well in some areas in year one of the plan, but we fell short in others. So the board set about reviewing the plan to see what was needed to be adapted, changed, or just tweaked. Our mission, vision, and values remain constant. The strategies, what we do, were reviewed, and little change was needed there. But some refinements were needed in our tactics, or the how we do it. We removed some redundancies. We streamlined others to focus on key areas. As you review the tactics in the plan, you'll note that the sum of the text is bolded. These bolded areas are, or excuse me, these bolded items are the emphasis for the current year. Finally, the board reviewed the targets for each KPI. Many, many had targets revised based on our experience in 2020. And we ad added targets for the year 2023, giving us a full three-year plan going forward. Our first area is driving growth. No area is more or less important in this plan. They are all interconnected and equally important. But I like to look at the driving growth as the foundation because it is what all the others build on. This year, we will focus on sales and marketing training for our volunteer leaders. That's, and then we will have to continue to enhance our staff collaboration between NSPE and NYSEC. We need to provide for leadership training for our members, especially our younger members. And we need working groups to test and evaluate the effectiveness of our member growth strategies. As we build on this growth, we need to expand our influence. Our voice needs to be heard in the public policy arena. These efforts are not needed only in the area of licensure, but in areas such as emerging technology to ensure that we protect the public's health, safety, and welfare, but we do not stifle innovation. In dealing with issues related to aging infrastructure, ensuring 
our nations are the best stewards of, the nat of its natural resources. And as 2020 has shown us, we are needed in the areas of public health. And there are so many more. To that end, we, we will develop a white paper on licensure exemptions, work to solve the issues associated with licensure mobility, work to educate our elected officials on responsible professional licensure, train our members on how, effective, uh, how to effectively advocate, and in conjunction with our state partners, develop a tailored outreach plan. In educating for the future, we'll need to focus educational offering on key topics identified in this plan. We hope to partner with state society to leverage these impacts. If 20 and 20 has taught us anything, it has shown us the value of a virtual offering. I don't think many of us would want to replace the face-to-face -face meeting completely, but the virtual offering has to become a major tool in our toolbox moving forward. And our organization is to, if our organization is to grow and thrive, we need to develop and train the leaders who will follow us. We are truly stronger the more diverse our membership and our profession becomes, not just because it's the right thing to do, but the more diverse we are, the more perspectives we have. With each new perspective, we add information, which allows us to solve problems more effectively. So as we work on this important task, we will add diversity topics to our training portfolio, work to create an environment where we foster and support true dialogue and collaborate with other engineering groups to find ways to support and learn from each other. As I stated at the beginning, the board has reset the targets for each of our KPIs and added targets for the year 2023. I hope you will take the time to review these and see where your state society can build on these efforts and trends. The targets are not meant to be an easy lift, but I do believe that they are achievable if we work together to make it happen. NSP is a federation, and with members being three-tiered, it's obvious that we're at our best when we're all playing from the same sheet of music. States work with the chapters, and national work with the states. We're all serving the same members, so a unified front best serves our membership. NSPE sees the importance of our relationship and shows it by stating it clearly in one of the values of its strategic plan. Under unity, it states a single integrated membership supported by seamless service services provided through state and national society and local chapters. Keeping that in mind, I want to talk about NSPE strategic plan and state society strategic planning. We have a poll to see how many of our state societies have a strategic plan. I'll give everybody a moment to take this. While y'all are polling, I will talk for just a little bit. Why, uh, and specifically about why it's so important to have a strategic plan. Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. I take that to mean that no plan is perfect, but if you have a plan, you have an idea of what to do next. It also implies that the process of planning is very beneficial. Another wise man once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Now, I don't think Mike Tyson was talking about having a strategic plan, but everyone on this call can understand getting punched in the mouth as we all were hit hard this year by the pandemic. Even during the pandemic, having a plan for an organization in place keeps it moving forward because the goals don't change, the environment does. That's why NSPE was able to pivot and move forward. Sticking to your mission, vision, and goals that are laid out clearly in a strategic plan keeps you focused on how to move forward after getting punched in the mouth. All right, so the, let's see, we've got the results in here. So let's see how many of you have a strategic plan. Well, I'm glad that nobody checked. No, we don't think that's necessary. So that's good. Uh, we do have a, about 30% say, not sure if we do, I have never seen it. So 
that's what we're going to try to improve on as we go along here today. So why have a strategic plan? Well, it gives you direction. So it looks like with most of you that have had these and those of you don't, if you don't have one, I highly recommend you putting this as a priority for your board this year. Strategic plans should be a living, breathing document. If you complete one of your goals, you don't get rid of the plan. You just add another goal. In fact, this year we've been added, added a new one to our strategic plan that I'll talk about later. The first PE con I attended was in Minneapolis in 2013, where strategic planning was discussed. When I returned back to South Carolina, SESPE strategic plan was on my mind. Kind of like some of you answered, I knew we had one, but I had no idea when the last time it had been updated. So when I did find it and brushed the dust off, I was, I was pretty embarrassed about how long it had been since we had looked at that and updated. At my prompting, our president created a committee at which drafted an updated strategic plan for the board to adopt later that year at our annual meeting. The plan looked great and the board made some positive strides for the society. Uh, at the time we had made that plan to be three years. So in 2018, when we were approaching the end of the third year, we decided to take another uh, look at it. So at our annual board strategic planning retreat, we decided to hire a consultant to come help us assess our implementation of the plan and help us take more steps to get uh, make more progress. So as consultants can be, they can be expensive. So we had to make some choices going into it. So to streamline our time as well as save some money, we reviewed our mission and vision statements and determined that we'd stick with what we have. M many times, if you go through this process, that's where you start out. And some people do write a new mission and vision, and that guides the plan. Our mission and vision were still solid, so we figured we're going to stick with this and move forward. We looked at the pillars that the plan had been written on a couple of years before, and everybody agreed the bones were still there. We just needed to fill it out a little bit. So we could, our key focus areas as recruitment, advocacy, engagement, and development. So now we have the basis to move forward, but now we just needed tactics to help us achieve our goals in each key focus area. The consultant helped us keep on track, helped us develop tactics, and outlined what one way that's very important in this process is determining accountability. Like I said, our old strategic plan had lived on a shelf for some time, and we were trying to ensure that this plan didn't see a shelf and stayed in front of us. To drive the implementation of the plan, we changed the way we conducted our board and executive committee meetings. Also, the president's report changed from being just a basic update to being an update on where we were with the status of our strategic plan. This was designed to help the president as well as the board be accountable for the plan moving forward. So now we have a plan that gives us direction and we know, so we know what to do once we do get punched in the face, as Mike Tyson said. Last year at PEcon, NSPE rolled out their new strategic plan. Though we have different headers in our key focus areas, we do see a lot of overlap. We saw an opportunity to take some of NSPE strategies and tactics and make them our own. We see the overlap for the plan like this. NSPE's key focus area is driving growth. We see that as our recruitment. From the strategic plan's goals, we see the overlap as increased membership. As NSPE's key focus area is shaping public policy, we see that as our advocacy key focus area. From NSPE's goals and its strategic plan, we see the overlap as increased public recognition of the value of competent and ethical engineering, as well as growth in the mission impact at all levels of the organization. We incorporated two of our key focus areas, engagement and development, into NSPE's Educating the Future. The overlap in engagement is participation across all programs, engaging more people and engaging them more fully, while in development we see it as maximized synergy, value created anywhere in the system that benefits, every, benefits everyone in the system. So you may have noticed we do not have a key focus area where promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineers fits in. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So tactics and implementation. Uh, we're lucky enough that our current South Carolina side professional uh, engineers president is Carlos Gittins, who was actually the Southeast Regional Director while they were NSPE was going through their making of their strategic plan. With his unique understanding of NSPE's plan and processes, he helped us in, in implementing and drafting ways to benchmark our own progress and achieving our goals. 
So Britt and Rick both mentioned KPIs. Starting in August, SCSPE started using KPIs of its own. Many of you may have been already using KPIs and I commend you for that, but for us, we were a little late to the game and we just now started tracking our progress and almost indirectly added another goal to our strategic plan. Under our State Society of President's leadership, we're now tracking key performance indicators in each part of the strategic plan. We also created a metric to see how diverse we are and how we are promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineers. So what sort of thing are we tracking? Well, the same things we've discussed already by NSPE, but we've made our own tweaks here and there. Again, our key focus areas are membership, advocacy, engagement, and now promoting diversity. So in membership, we started tracking our numbers by years. Like most state societies and NSPE, we've been seeing a decline in our membership and we've now tracking to see how fast that's happening. We're tracking the disciplines in each area of the chapters. Uh, our Aiken chapter is very unique and the, the Savannah River nuclear site is in that chapter. So we know that it's a good area to find speakers that speak to nuclear engineers for their chapter meetings. We're also looking at different kinds of members, our student members, regular members, and retired members. Tracking this kind of information also helps you in your budgeting as student members don't pay anything and retired members pay uh, a fraction. So this way you can help forecast what your dues income is gonna be the next year. Under advocacy, we also track our legislative touches. Uh, we do something in our state or had until uh, COVID happened and we're looking at doing these virtually, but we have something called off-season lobbying meetings with uh, legislators that are in key committees that we serve in as well as meeting new legislators like years like this with election years where everybody in both our House and Senate were up for election. Uh, we find that meeting with them before they actually come to the State House and asking them for something, uh, it goes way better if you meet them first just in a general meet and greet. We're very pleased to have our first PE elected in years to our State House, so we're glad to have a champion again this year. We also track our calls to action. We want to know how many people are opening our calls to action, and I can also find that, see how many people have clicked to answer these calls to action. Uh, many states do this, but we pre-populate emails going to certain legislators that we're targeting. And knowing this, we also have, an, have a somewhat of an impact of how many people have talked to our legislators. I always say if the legislator says he got three emails, it means he got one, but if he says he got 50, he only got 10. But I can actually know how many he got by tracking these numbers. We're also tracking our Engineers Day on the Hill attendance. This used to be a pretty good, uh, well-attended event that we held during E-Week, but this year we're moving it to coincide with our legislative reception and uh, partnering with lots of other engineering organizations just to get as many people as we can there. Uh, we hope this will still be able to happen. Um, obviously with COVID, anything's up, but we're trying to make this a big day uh, to make all the engineers proud and SCSPE is championing that. We also check how many people come to our legislative reception. Uh, one of our first um, measurables when we implemented this plan was simply having 40 SESPE members at this. We also partner with ASCE, the Structural Engineers, Carolina's AGC, ACEC South Carolina, the Architects and the Land Surveyors for this. But what we wanted to do was have the largest number of representatives from the society. And we, we set that bar at 40 and we were able to achieve that the first year and we're hoping to continue to grow. We're also in tracking our engagements. We have, we've had various educational offerings pre-COVID, lots of them that have moved virtual, but how many people are coming to our chapter meetings and our large conferences? We also track how many of these are members and non-members. One of our largest non-dues uh, revenue, uh, non revenue generators is what we call our fall symposium. And though it's a higher price to come as a non-member, we usually have more non-members attend that than, uh, than members. So we then take that list and look at those as low hanging fruit, trying to get them to join. We're also tracking who, how many people follow us on various social media. We're on link, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Again, if your state society is not on social media, I highly recommend you getting on there. It's a great way to raise your profile. Uh, and one of the most important things to me that I track is our open rates on my weekly newsletters to see how many members are reading it and if they're just opening it or if they're actually clicking one of the links I put in there. And now, uh, thanks to 
uh, Trish's leadership and, and the NSPE, we're now tracking promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineers. Uh, we're looking at the diversity of our local and state leadership, uh, disciplines by chapters, young professionals, and conversion rates of non-dues members to paying members. Integrating your own strategic plan or using NSPE strategic plan to drive your decision and investment of your resources will help the Federation. Everyone working together will help us in the end. So how do I see state societies helping in the implementation and, and integration with the strategic plan? By all of us working together. Here are some of the ways that we're working together and we continue to move forward together. Under driving growth, membership growth is something we all need. NSPE recently launched a membership drive for mid-year, mid-career engineers. Uh, not all state societies have large budgets, so NSPE was nice enough to work with, but, uh, work with state societies to set a budget in order to have this happen in their state. My board simply said, let's do $200, and NSPE said, sure, we'll do it. So we're, we're using that for the mailer, but also participating in the email and their social media outreach. Many other states also took advantage of this and worked with their own budget for in, with NSPE in order to try to recruit new members in their area. Shaping public policy. State societies can easily help raise the awareness of NSPE's calls to action. State societies can also engage NSPE's government relations team and add their state-specific issues to the NSPE Advocacy Center, which will increase the number of contacts made by members as it will engage as it will engage not only the NSPE members living in your state, but also the licensed engineers in, a, uh, in that area and broaden the communication impact. Educating for the future. We're already working together to add and have every state utilize NSPE speaker bank, uh, speakers bureau. We're looking to see how state societies can archive their webinars so other states or NSPE can possibly use them and do some type of profit sharing. Recently, after a Southeast regional call, a few of the states have considered leveraging its network to host a regional webinar that will be open for all the states in the region, and we could do a revenue share by where the registrants came from in each state. We need to continue to look at ways like this to help each other. To all the other execs on the call, how often do we talk about how, how we need to grow the NSPE brand? We can boost our, our reach on social media by liking and retweeting each other's posts. Keep the Society of Professional Engineers and people's feeds on all types of social media. Most of us are already on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Again, if you're not on those platforms, I can't tell you how important that it is nowadays. Talk to the younger members in your state. Find out what, where they're at on social media. One of our board members recently said that Facebook and LinkedIn are really only used by mid to late career engineers. They said if we wanted to get younger engineers, we needed to be on Instagram. So, hey, SCSPE now has an Instagram account. Engage your board members to be on these platforms too. Make sure they like NSPE and your state society's page. Ask the board to be active on social media and ask them to follow your page and like posts that you share, as well as share them and retweet them. Anything about NSPE, the state society, or other states. The key to uh, breaking through the platform's algorithm is by getting in organic impressions and by having them follow you and liking their po these posts, that will get more breakthrough on all platforms. Once a year, the entire NSPE Federation does a great job on social media with PE Day, but it needs to be, be throughout the year. But let's talk about that one day. The young engineer that uh, I talked about about Instagram is the guy there with the PE mask, and I think he's in the audience. So Jason. I'm trying to make you famous. But Professional Engineers Day has raised NSPE's profile more than anything I can think of since I've been in the society. PE Day in one hashtag speaks to the mission, advocates for the PE, and much more. If every person just went and searched by the hashtag and liked and retweeted everyone else's post, we'd get even more exposure. Promoting diversity in tomorrow's engineers, DE and I are, is new to SCSPE. Many states are ahead of us on this, but we're now tracking metrics so we can define a path forward to start and develop a DE&I plan. We're even having President Hatley come speak at our March board meeting about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Young professionals focus. I know our state has started to focus on this in the past two years. A huge demographic change happened on our board of directors a few years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. I was shocked one year when I realized four-fifths of my executive committee were 40 and under. Our current treasurer, who is a young engineer and a uh, young engineer of the year here, 
and recently an NSPE Emerging Leader graduate, has helped us keep the finger on the pulse of the younger engineers. We've in, even implemented a few non-technical, just networking events. We call them Beers with Engineers. And yes, we've even had a virtual Beers with Engineers during the pit, uh, pandemic. So look at things like that. If you really need a technical aspect, you could still attract young engineers by hosting it at a brewery. If you call ahead, most breweries do give tours and you tell the brewer what you're looking for, he can probably make it technical enough to give a PDH. You can talk about the equipment he's using, temperatures and things like that. If your state can support an emerging leaders program, I think that would be great. Unfortunately, South Carolina doesn't have an emerging leaders program. So we're trying to promote NSPE's emerging leader program to our membership. Look in the possibility of providing a scholarship for a member to be a part of that program. We need to find a way to get the younger engineers to buy in. And though I hate this analogy, it is very true. We need the younger engineers to drink the NSPE Kool-Aid. One great way to get them to drink the Kool-Aid is to get them to drink it in college. Even if your state doesn't have a student chapter, student members are valuable. Do any of your members speak at schools? I know they do here in South Carolina. And when they do, I send them with a stack of applications or at least a web page link to give to the students. Student members have the opportunity to receive all of our publication and expo it exposes them to who we are and what we do. We have to try to keep them engaged. Tie your student membership to the scholarship program if you have one. I know many of you are thinking student memberships don't provide income and many of them do not convert to dues paying members. I hear you, but in preparing for this meeting, I found out about a great program the professional engineers in North Carolina are doing. North Carolina's Triangle Chapter has a student conversion program. They have a student mentor program with 30 to 35 students each semester and each, uh, each mentor is assigned one to three students. The program is one semester long, but if they want to, they can continue it for longer. They've even been meeting virtually with coffee chats during the pandemic. This is something I think many of our state societies could incorporate. We have three large engineering schools here in South Carolina. So this is something I'm gonna look into. So all of these are just examples of how we can help implement a strategic plan and track your progress. The important thing is to have a strategic plan. See how your plan can help your chapters, state, and NSPE succeed. How can your plan and NSPE's plan overlap? How can we help each other? We're in this together, so we have to move forward together. I'll turn it back over to you, Trish. Thank you, Adam, for all those great ideas and for your perspective as a State Society Executive Director. As Adam mentioned, the diversity component of our plan is new and having um, actions in that area may be new to your organization like they are to his. So um, when I visit his board in March, I'm going to talk with them about how we as individuals can work on this issue in our profession, in our communities, and how we as organizational leaders can make positive change and take action to further our goals. If you'd like to engage in more dialogue on that on this topic, I'd be happy to visit with you about meeting with your state or chapter board, similar to what I'm doing with Adam's group. Since this key focus area is new to us, I think it's helpful for us to be speaking the same language and sharing best practices with each other. So as we close our conversation today, I'd like to circle back to the very first key focus area of our plan, driving growth. Driving growth was listed first in the plan for a reason. It's vitally important to all of us. And we heard that loud and clear from those of you who, who were involved in the development of the plan. As you've seen in this plan, National has committed resources to the strategies identified. And our national leaders have stepped up in big ways to support our states and our chapters during this pandemic. But we must all continue to focus on driving growth. For our chapters and states, that means a relentless focus on membership retention starting right now. As you are all well aware, the vast majority of our members are new at the end of the year, and they are doing so in unprecedented times. We don't know what challenges they will face gaining approvals from their employers for reimbursement or finding that extra $2.99 in their own personal budgets. But we can reach out and talk to them about it, and we can make sure that they feel connected and that they're supported in their challenges. So we thank you for your time today and for all that you do for NSPE and our profession. I think we're um, almost to the end. I saw one question um, come through about mission and vision statements. And 
um, I would just say, you know, South Carolina had a plan in place previously, and so they they looked at theirs. If you don't currently have a plan, I think adopting the NSPE mission and vision statement makes absolute sense. And, and yes, we, we love alignment, and the, the more aligned we are in that mission and vision, um, the better the better off we are. But, um, you know, each of our state societies has, um, you know, different perspective, and you're dealing with different things. So if, if you need it, go through the process and develop your own mission and vision statement. You know, I think that's fine too. So I think with that, we'll, we'll wrap it up and, and thank you all so much for joining us today. If you have um, any more questions um, you can go ahead and type them in and we'll, um, we'll try to um, respond to those um, later. And um, you'll have an opportunity to do a survey as we as you leave the, the session as well. Thank you.